Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be chatting about how you can design graphics that are done in seconds. And so I'm going to teach you a kind of a special little method, kind of hack that we can use inside Canva to bulk create content. And so we're going to take a spreadsheet pretty much and, and take that spreadsheet into Canva and have it bulk just automatically create things just like this. So you can see here with my um, design here that there's like all these different posts and they are, that I just created those at a click of a button, then went in and, and tweaked some of the sizing so that the, so the quotes are a little bit different and that's all I had to do. And so I'm gonna teach you exactly how you can do that today. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Jackie. I am a graphic designer and coach for small business owners, meaning that I teach business owners how they can create their own incredible brand and graphics through using programs like Canva, which is what I'm going to be showing you today, as well as just how to actually do good design because design is more than just looking pretty. It's all about communication. And so if you want to keep in touch, feel free to head over to my Instagram. Um, I'm just at white dear GD, or you can hit up my podcast, Seriously in Business, to learn all sorts of things about branding and design. And I would love if you find this video helpful to hit me a like um, and hit subscribe so you can keep in touch for more of the latest hacks and tips for creating incredible branding and graphics for your business. So let's get into it. So I love using ChatGPT as the first step. You can totally, totally skip this step out. The main goal of this is just to help us to create content quicker. But in essence, all you can do is just go straight into a Google Sheet, which I'm going to show you in a moment, and then enter in your own content there. But I'm going to show you how you use ChatGPT first, if that's the kind of the path you'd like to go down, as it's a cool kind of tool to kind of save some time. So for an example, I'm going to do... Um, collate 15 quotes about branding and design um, for my Instagram. You don't have to say for my Instagram. I'm going to write even here unique quotes. So it comes up with 15 different ones rather than um, five that are the same and then just repeated the rest um, as happened before. And I'm going to press generate. And what it's going to do is automatically source from all these different places, lots of different quotes for me. And I don't have to do the Googling. I don't have to do anything. It's just going to write it all down for me. So you can see here, it's got design is not just what it looks like. Design is not just what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works. Oh, I love that. Um, and so many different quotes. I'm going to pop these in. So the goal of these is obviously for your Instagram, you don't want to be posting a, a quote post every single post. But say you want to post a quote post every once every week. And if you do 15 of these in one go, literally in one click, which you'll see in a moment, then you're done. Like you've, you've designed posts for your quotes for three months of the year. Um, and you could do a hundred of these at a time. I'm just doing 15 at a time. So we kind of just get a bit of an idea, but um, you can do more as, as much of these as you want. I'm not actually sure what the Canva limit would be, but it's definitely not 15. And I would dare say it would go at least up to a hundred. Um, and so I'm just going to grab these, te grab this text, going to copy it with my mouse and then press control C or command C if you're on Mac, then head over to a Google sheet. So you can use Excel, um, numbers, whatever, kind of you're using as your data processing formatting sheety thing um, and I'm going to go to the second row I'm not going to go to the first one and I'll show you why in a second but the second row then I'm just going to press paste and then you see it's put all of those different quotes in one different line each so so simple I didn't have to like go into google source each one kind of try to copy it paste it all in it's all done for me so if you didn't use chat GPT, you could literally just write write what the text that you would like on each post inside each row so column no, row two is one post and et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I'm actually going to do is split this up into multiple columns. Each column is going to be like its own text box inside Canva. This will all make sense shortly, but in essence, I want to separate out the person who wrote the quote from the actual quote itself. So I'm going to go through and copy out the name, delete the dash, and just paste that into here and do that over and over again just for these other ones. This feels a bit tedious, but honestly, it doesn't actually take that long. So once I've kind of split every, all of these up, um, I'm going to now title this column, which is why I wanted to leave that top row free. So I'm actually just going to write in here, quote, you can write anything in, but just kind of what makes sense to you for what that column contains. And I'm also going to write credit in here. You could write name or whatever it is. You could also do this for customer testimonials. This would be such a great way. You could actually enter in like the testimonial here, 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 here. Like it can take up as much room as you like. Um, and then add in the person's name here. You could add in like, say if they have a job title, like coach or consultant or a accountant and you can write that in here and kind of pull that into your um, Canva for a great design. Anyway, I'm getting excited about all these multiple uses. Next, I'm going to go into Canva and I'm going to create my design. So as I said, I'm going to be pretending this is a social media post for my Instagram. So I'm going to go into Canva and press create design and I'm going to search for Instagram 
and I'm going to select the portrait post. You can totally do square, but portrait posts are really, really great because they take up more of the scroll. So when someone's scrolling on the Instagram, if you're using a portrait post, it's actually got, you can see here, it's a little bit taller than a square, which just means that you're taking up more room, which means that people are more likely to notice your post. We've got this capability to do it. So I think why not as much of, as we can to design around, around that portrait post instead of square. But the important thing to remember with portrait posts is that they are still cut off in your grid. So your, your portrait post will still get cut to a square when it's previewed in your grid at the time of recording this at least. Um, and so what you need to do is make sure that you don't make a design that looks weirdly cut off when it enters your grid. So I'm going to show you a hack around how I make sure that I, my designs always look great on the grid and also just in a full post um, when people are scrolling their feed. So I'm going to actually insert a square. To do that, I'm just going to press R on my keyboard. R and it's inserted a square straight away. You can also just go to the elements section here and just add in a square. That's more than okay. I'm then going to make this square full size. So I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and that's going to keep my square being a square ratio. If I don't hold down shift and try to do this, you'll see that it becomes kind of a bit of a rectangle. It can be any shape at all. But if I hold down shift, it makes it into a square. So I'm going to bring that square right to the edges over here and then bring that square right to the edges over here. Make sure that it's centered. So you'll see that pink line that comes up that's letting me know that it's centered. Then I'm going to go to, I've already got my rulers turned on, but if you don't already have your rulers turned on, go to file, view settings and press show rulers and guides. Then I'm going to hover my mouse over the top of these guides and bring and click and drag and it'll bring down this ruler. Now this ruler isn't visible on your final design. It's literally just to, to something for you to see so that you can arrange your design accordingly. So you put you can put rulers wherever you like, but I like to put them where the square is so I can see on Instagram that this is where my grid is going to get cut off on a design. So if I just press this down, so I'm actually going to show you on my own Instagram how what I mean by the cutting off of the grid. So you see here, um, say, uh, what's a good example? I'll do this one here. So this is just a static post um, and you can see that it's got cut off here just above my head and cut off here with the clouds. But if I actually click on the post, you can see it's actually got quite a lot more room above my head and a lot more room below the clouds. But I made sure that my design looked good when it was cut off in the square, but it also is just taking up so much more room because it's more of a rectangle than a square. So if you can take advantage of that extra space that you've got, because it just helps your design to have more room and it helps you to take up more space on the feed. So I'm going to go back to my design here. Um, and so you can see that I put the rulers in on the top and bottom of the square. So now I can just delete the square and now I've got these rulers that I can see. If you want to preview your design with and without the rulers, I just press Control R or Command R on Mac. Oops, no, Shift R. My mistake. You can press Shift Shift R and it takes away the rulers and not, which just means you can preview it without the lines if you're at the final stage and you just want to check everything looks good. Um, okay, so now I'm going to make my design. So obviously you can use, you can do whatever design you want. I'm going to go through showing you how I make my designs, but um, I just hope this will give you a couple of different tips for how you can do yours, but there's so many options for you. If you don't have a brand yet, please go back and maybe watch some of my other videos around creating an elevator brand or the wow model um, and kind of be thinking through how can I create a proper brand that's going to be consistent and beautiful in my graphics. Um, I'll link the elevator brand video below because it's really helpful to get you started thinking about if you need to do a rebrand or start a brand from scratch. But for essence, I, I don't. I, I want to make sure that you use Canvas templates. Canvas templates are wonderful. The only caveat I give is making sure that you edit those templates and make them your own. Having a, your own branding on things helps you be so recognizable, helps you to be really consistent, helps you to be c c create customer loyalty because people are beginning to recognize you and form a connection with you. Um, so if you don't want to start from scratch, though, feel free to do a, a template. For example, I'm not going to use this one, but I want to show you it in general. If I just click on this, you'll see it pops up here. And I could click on this back and change it all to being my brand colors or I could just totally delete the background and make it my own brand. Um, I have a whole folder full of my brand elements. So I have this white deer folder, I've got all my different brand elements. I'm going to pop that there and already this is looking so much more like my brand but I also have my own brand font so I'm now going to click on this. I'm just going to ungroup these text boxes, press the text box and go over here and you'll see that because I have Canva Pro I have this white deer. These are my fonts. These are the fonts that I've uploaded and that I'm using as my brand fonts and so whenever I create a graphic I'm always using these fonts. So I'm going to click on this Terminal font here um, and then that could be just like so. I'm going to click on the credit kind of uh, down here and I could either make this, I actually use a Terminal kind of like a, a lighter version, a regular version here. Maybe I make that into all caps, maybe make it a smidgen smaller so it's got some more hierarchy that I really want this to capture people's attention. I don't really care if they see this. I need it to be small enough that it's not taken away from the design, but it's not so small that it's not visible. Um, so I pop that in there and then pretty much that could be my design if I wanted it to be, but I'm going to do one that's slightly more my branding because I can. So I'm going to open up a new page um, and then I'm going to go to, I have, I love having um, this kind of um, design here. So I'm going to bring this so it's a full page. 
Then I actually liked having a purple color for my branding, but this isn't purple clearly. So I'm actually going to go to edit image. This is really showing you the behind the scenes of my brand. I'm going to edit image and go to, oh, I've skipped it. No, photogenic. Photogenic is a really cool um, editing of photos kind of filters. And thankfully it actually has one that makes most most colors, most, most photos, my own color. So I scroll down and see this color pop, this one here, this just makes everything into my color, which is so, so helpful. It doesn't always be the case for every brand, but for me, it works a dream. So that is now, sometimes it glitches like this. So if that ever happens to you, like it's just a thing, don't stress out about it. Just go back and do it again. Um, sometimes we just need to wait a moment after we press apply. Otherwise, Canva's kind of still processing that we've changed everything. And it's asking me to press apply again. So I'm just going to do that and hope that it kind of sticks that time. Gonna click out. Yep, it's held. Beautiful. I'm actually also going to just make this a little bit um, transparent and then change the background to being my purple color um, just so that like the, the grainy texture is just a little bit more subtle. So I'm just going to bring it down to there. Okay, next I need to add in my text. So I'm just going to press T and it's going to open up a text box. And because I've already set what my brand fonts are, that's already just going to be straight there, ready to use and already in my brand font. So I'm going to put um, quote here. Um, I'll tell you some more about this in a moment. Um, I'm also going to duplicate this text box um, by just pressing this one here and then I'm going to write credit here. And again, I'm just going to change that like I did earlier to this other font, maybe making it all caps and then making it much smaller. So you can just do that by grabbing the corner bits here and bringing this down. Um, now I'm going to fill in the rest of my design. This is looking a little bit boring for my brand. If your brand is really clean and simple, this could be enough. Like don't stress about making it super intricate if your branding isn't intricate. But my branding is kind of like a full on. So I'm going to add in some of my other brand elements. I'm going to add in this little bubble for me. I love my little bubble. Actually, even you took to use bubbles inside my photo shoot. I had loved it so much. And then I'm going to add in some clouds down the bottom here. Uh, maybe, maybe this one as well. I haven't used this one for a while. Like so. And I'm going to add in some more text. I'm actually going to write in brand inspiration. And I'm going to make that into my sub. I kind, of, I kind of have an accent font in my branding, which is this Gustol one. So I'm going to make that there and then bring this and then actually rotate the text box like so. So it's kind of not really text that's taken away from my actual text, but it's actually just um, kind of like a, a design element that I'm kind of bringing in over here. So I'm going to add that there and then make that text white. My branding, I try to use only white text. So I'm going to make all of this into white, which just means I need to make sure my background is dark enough that it's readable. So this is starting to get a little bit unreadable, but again, because it's not priority information, it's actually okay if it's not super, super clear, as long as it's clear enough. Um, do I want to add anything else into here? I have a cute, some cute little um, kind of like doodle elements. So I'm going to add those in here. Um, like so, maybe pop this like there. Do, do, do. All right, that's looking okay so far. I think actually I'm going to delete that. What I really want to do is add in some quotation marks. I love just adding in a little, little quote to be like, this is a quote rather than this is my own thing. So I'm going to write quotation mark, quote mark, but I'm going to write doodle because I want a kind of an illustrative kind of rough kind of drawing um, rather than a really like structured one, like one of these. Um, I found one of these yesterday and I was really happy with it, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find it again. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is change my search a little bit um, to go quotation. See if that comes up with anything. Yes, here it is. So you can just see sometimes you just need to tweak your, your search. So if you can't find what you want, feel free to tweak. I'm going to pop this here, but I'm actually going to flip it so that it's facing the other direction. I'm going to change it to being white. And now I can start to think about adding in my text. But before I do that, there's one final step. And that final step is this. Obviously, my quote is going to be longer than just this here. So I'm actually going to copy this and paste it and paste it a few times just so I can see what it looks like with more text. And you'll see here that it's kind of now really badly aligned. What I want to do is align it over here to, so it's about this far away from the edge. And I also want it left aligned. Um, that's going to match my branding a lot more. But I also don't want the text coming all the way over this way. So I'm actually going to bring this text box to being more like this. Um, and then I'm going to make it a little bit less text here. And then I think that kind of distance is looking really nice. I'm going to do the same thing with this, not make heaps of text, but make sure it's left aligned because if I leave this center aligned, if the names are longer and some names are shorter for my credit, then it's going to look a little bit odd. So I'm going to press left align um, and bring this down here like so. All right. So I've now had my daughter join me. <laughs> Classic mum life. Um, so I'm going to continue with this design. So I'm added in this up here, added this here. I've made sure that this is left aligned so that all the text always starts on this left kind of section here. Um, next, what I want to do is finish off my design. I can just kind of 
add this in here and then I can add in my bulk text. So what you want to do is scroll down on the left here. I've got a lot of these folders. You probably won't have this many. Um, scroll down here and go to this app section. In this app section, all you need to do is search the word bulk and you'll find this bulk create section. Um, so just click on bulk create and you'll see there's three steps we need to do. First is uploading a CSV. So I'm going to go back to my, my, my spreadsheet here that I added in all the text. So I'm going to go to file, download, CSV. So that's the kind of what we want to save it as. So I'm just going to save that to my computer. Um, it's got it down here in my downloads. And I'm going to go back to my quote um, and I'm going to upload CSV. You can enter the data manually, in which case you can kind of just, it kind of just sets it up like this and you could paste in stuff, but I find it easier just to use um, Google Sheets or something. Press upload CSV. I'm just going to grab that file I just downloaded. Then you can see here it's taken, it said, oh, you've got one column that was labeled quote, you've got another column that was labeled credit. I'm like, yes, that's everything I wanted. So you could obviously have more down here, but I'm going to just click on this um, text box here. I'm going to right click on it and you'll see this connect data option is now available. When I do that, I want to put quote and you'll see that it's put quote in here. So let's pop these little brackets around here and that's just letting me know that this area is going to get filled in with this quote section. I'm going to do the same with the credit, press connect data, press credit. And now we're almost done. I'm going to press this continue button here and it's just pulled in all this information. And if there was one of them I didn't want, I could just unselect it like so. But I'm now going to press generate pages. And what it's going to do is generate a whole new Canva design tabby thing for me um, where I can now... It's now designed the graphics for me. So obviously because I had those two sections, I kind of forgot about that first one, but this is a good demonstration of what actually happens. Um, because it, so we could, you can kind of see has happened here is it's kind of just um, taken that one because I didn't actually put any data into that. Um, and it's just popped it there because I, every second page was going to be that design. You'll see if I go back to my original, it just looks like so. Um, I actually want to test something while I've got you here. I'm going to try right click on this. No, it doesn't want me to do it. If I press back. I can press connect data and put quote here and put um, my credit here. And I want to see if we can actually do that with the actual design. So I'm going to press continue again and generate. Now it's going to open up a new Canva design. Da -da 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 -da. And you can see here that it's actually done the different alternating design, which is so, so helpful if you want two kind of designs. Um, you could even do like this design, but do like three different color options and it'll just rotate through those three different color options, which can be really, really, really helpful. So now you'll see there's a problem. The problem is that my design doesn't look perfect on each of these. So you would have to now go manually through if you want it to look perfect, which I do recommend for the extra five minutes work that it's going to be, just making sure everything looks perfect. So just changing this so that this text maybe is a little bit smaller, maybe making it a bit like this and aligning it, just checking that every Everything is perfect. Going into this one, this one's probably kind of nice, but like design is how it works, is like the key of the of the quote. So maybe I could make that into a different color or I could make this into a different color. So I could put this here, make this maybe a dark purple, maybe even darker purple. Let's go a little bit darker again. And you can see that now this quote is now looking more dynamic and interesting because there's a little bit of difference and everything's getting broken up. So now I just go through and kind of tweak the design, just make sure everything's looking perfect, make sure that nothing is looking a bit funny um, and just check all the, the, the line breaks are in good spots. Um, just make sure it's looking perfect because you're posting this as a once-off design into your creative. And, and although you're seeing all of them at once, that doesn't mean we need to just like rush through them. And so just go through and just slowly make sure they're all perfect. It's actually made me a design for each of the... Um, it's gone through. You can see there's 30 designs, but I only had 15 quotes. So I've got an option for all of these um, as this kind of layout or um, or this kind of layout. And so um, choose which one you kind of like. Maybe delete the other one. I can say, oh, this one actually looks good in a small quote. I'll use that one for my social media post. Delete that one. And then when you're all finished, all you have to do is go to share, download, and then download each of these pages and ready to share it to your social media. You can obviously also do, Canva has a great scheduling um scheduling feature that you can use if you want to do that share on social um, so feel free to use that should you desire but in essence that's how you do it that is how you can create multiple designs in just a few moments inside canva using the bulk create feature so i'd love to hear if you've got any questions to pop them in the comments or if you think of any fun ways to use this like how i said you could use it for testimonials um, and just kind of edit those in or there's just so many options so enjoy that um, and let me know if this one has blown your mind like it blew mine when i first knew it was possible and don't forget to hit subscribe if this has been helpful for you and you want more content just like this um, if there's any other tutorials you'd like to see as well feel free to pop that in the comments and um, if you want to see me more regularly, I'm always on my Instagram. So feel free to head over there and I'll chat to you more. All right. Bye.